Hello YouTube, today we're going to be looking at setting up a profile for Falcon BMS in CH Control Manager. Now the CH Control Manager portion of this tutorial is actually going to be very very simple. Uh, you just simply go by clicking Map Wizard, selecting your devices, in my case this is going to be a fighter stick, uh, the Pro Throttle and the Pro Pedals. Click OK. Yes, you do want to combine the devices into 8 axes, 32 buttons that's all great and also go ahead and include CMS scripting capability even if you're not going to use it right away or maybe you end up never using it it's always nice to have that option I found so therefore I always want CMS to be an option available to me no matter what I'm programming for so we'll notice a couple of things uh, about this mode one of them being that the uh, well the mini stick isn't really mapped to anything axes wise neither is the POV hat switch here. One of the things that I like to do out uh, right out of the gate is to put U to POV up, uh, that's to uncage missiles, in particular sidewinders, and then POV down I like to set to keyboard key D for uh, going into dogfight mode. So those two are right there available on my HOTAS. And some of the things I'm going to say right now uh, when we get into Falcon BMS, I have things set up the way that I like it. How I like it may not necessarily be how you like it, but there are some correlation to in-game functionality that should probably be mapped to the stick, and we'll go over that here in a minute. Now I'm going to go ahead and load my default profile here for Falcon BMS, just in case I mess something up during that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and download it again, make sure everything is A-OK, -okay. and then we're going to go ahead and start Falcon BMS. Now, I'm going to warn you that because I have Thrustmaster Cougar MFDs, I have a pair of them hooked up right now, I may be getting a few more of them, uh, things may be a little bit different compared to how it may operate for you. But we're going to go to Setup and click on Controllers. And you're going to want to make sure that you select key, uh, CH Control Manager Device 1. And then I have a current key file, key file set up for CH. And you always have the option that you can uh, do something else. Uh, if you have, like, I have a different profile for CH than I do for the Thrustmaster Warthog, for instance. So depending on which HOTAS I happen to have hooked up at, the, at that very moment, I have different configurations, key files. And you can save and stuff like that. But you'll notice something here right away that my throttle is not set up. You know, it is not registering. Everything else is registering. My rudder pedals are fine. And you may run into this. And this can be particularly frustrating at uh, first. But you need to click on Advanced and go over to Flight Controls. Throttle axes, you want to set to CH Control Manager. Uh, device 1 and Z axis. So here we are, and I th think it should be okay. We shouldn't have to reverse axes, but we'll double check on that. Yep, everything here is good. And then at some point here, you're going to want to set your afterburner detent. Now, I have a couple pieces of Velcro on mine at that particular spot. So I'm going to set that up, and there we go. And then whenever I basically go beyond that detent, it is afterburner. So again, some self-adhesive Velcro works wonders for setting up that detent spot on your stick, uh, since it doesn't come with one by default. So let's look at some of the controls uh, kind of going around. POV I have set up for trim, uh, nose up, nose down, roll right roll left, basically trim manual. That mirrors the real aircraft. That is how it's set up. Uh, interestingly enough, the Warthog stick is uh, a little bit more accurate. It, the, the Warthog and the F-16 use very, very similar uh, HOTAS, or at least uh, stick controls and setups. In fact, the one thing that the CH is missing is the kind of pinky paddle and its addition to the pinky button. So this is going to be the HOTAS pinky switch. I have that set up. Fuel air toggle for button 3 on the side, which also sets modes and things like that. If you're going to be using mode modes, I don't. But what's kind of important is you'll see 
You'll notice here it'll say button 69. Keep in mind that buttons 1 through 48 are my multifunction displays. So that may be a little bit different. But joystick button 1 is gun. Button 2 is weapon pickle. Uh, 3 again, toggle middle refu uh, refueling. Pinky switch for HOTAS for number 4. Now 5 is TMS up. This is how the actual controls in the F-16 are set up. Uh, button 6 will be TMS right, TMS down, and TMS left. Uh, that's very critical functionality for the F-16, the way that it's set up and designed to be used. So I went ahead and mirrored controls. And then in the next buttons, which would be buttons you know, 9, 10, 11, and 12 basically, I have that set up to CMS forward, right, down, left. And again, that mirrors the real life F-16. And then down here, I have it set weapons, uh, cycle ADA hard points, cycle, circle, cycle air to ground hard points, uh, release bombs singly, release bombs in pairs. That's not exactly how the actual F-16 HOTAS is set up. That's just how I do it. Uh, you know, it works for me. Uh, you may want to look up online and set yours up a little bit differently. So I have here on the throttle at the very bottom flaps up and down. And then the actual, this would be buttons 31 and 32 respectively uh, for basically to raise and lower the flaps. And I don't have any buttons assigned to, I think it's like 30 and... Uh, 29, I guess it's 31, 32, I guess it's 30 and 29, I don't have anything assigned to, I don't think. Up from that, you have the HOTAS DMS switches, and that's kind of this four-way hat above the uh, mini stick on the throttle. And then where your forefinger rests is where I have the slew controls for the radar cursors, and then I have the button when you actually click on the mini stick uh, button 1 or 17 I think it actually is in this setup to designate the radar target and then of course the 8 way hat on that does nothing and then for the three buttons at your pinky ring and middle fingers uh, middle finger I have toggle the air brake again I like to have that right there for dog fighting and pulling maneuvers and then my pinky finger activates the Victor radio, and my, uh, or I should say, my ring finger activates Victor, my pinky activates uniform. So that we're using in game voice comms and things of that nature, uh, you're good to go. Now, there is a lot more options to be set up here that you can possibly do, uh, but once you've decided that, you save and you can load key files from here. So if you want to make changes to, uh, default settings essentially in keybinds that's where you would do it or say save a different profile for a warthog versus a ch uh, or an x52 versus an x55 or if you have multiple hotasses which frankly i don't know most people who do have multiple hotasses most people have one i have them all or i should say i've had them all i've uh, since given away my x52 and x55 but i still have the warthog and the ch stuff of course and then to apply everything down here, you set apply, click OK, and you should be good to go from there. Now I am going to go through and set up a couple of more things here. Uh, you'll notice here I'm hitting button 25, 26, and notice how it's right multifunction display. Problem is this is the left multifunction display, and I was uh, in, in game earlier and hitting this button going, why is it? changing the thing on the wrong display so I, you basically got to scroll through everything I mean it's just there's a lot of keyboards so I want left oh uh, no I want actually this one to be up and then left multifunction display brightness down and then these are the different outside buttons functioning functionality uh, right now, I let's see here. What's here? HUD brightness up. Oh, okay. That that's sim gain down. Okay. Well, 
<laughs> oh, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and assign that button there. Like so. Apply. Okay. So now I got those kind of mapped out and, and a couple little things. I'm sure I've probably got a couple more keybinds screwed up. Uh, but that's just kind of a quick demonstration, quick and dirty, how I set things up for Falcon 4 BMS. Uh, when it comes to deciding where you want to use DMS and a few things like that on your HOTAS, uh, you have flexibility. And again, if you want to try to be more realistic as capable, there are a couple profiles if you search Google as well as CH Hanger where people have kind of put placards and how they set everything up in Falcon BMS. This is how I do it. Ultimately, you're going to be spending, actually, frankly, quite a bit of time and probably several hours uh, trying to figure out what do you need, where you need, where do you need it, when do you need it, and tweaking that profile both in the in-game keybind screens as well as perhaps out of game, but primarily in the in-game keybinding, really sorting through all of those things. Now, unfortunately, one of the problems with Falcon BMS, from my personal opinion, is the fact that you cannot access the key binding screen, I don't believe, from a mission, inside of a mission. So if you're in the mi middle of a mission and you realize, oh crap, I forgot to bind this, or as I did in the last mission, why is my brightness button on my MFDs doing the wrong one while well, I had them bound incorrectly? And there's no way to go in and correct that from inside of a mission. You have to back out of the campaign or back out of the mission and get back to the main screen here, go to setup, make the changes, save everything, then get back into mission. So that's a little bit of a pain in the butt. But it is what it is. Hey, it is a 15-year-old game engine, and the folks over at Benchmark Sims has done a phenomenal job uh, in keeping it up to date and making it in many ways, still the definitive uh, flight combat sim, or jet sim at least, uh, on the market when it comes to a truly dynamic campaign. Uh, there are going to be people who are going to argue that DCS has since eclipsed it in terms of technology and a few other things, and DCS 2 is looking really good. Uh, but as great as DCS is in terms of just a general combat jet flight simulator, uh, you know, I really miss having a dynamic campaign, which is something that DCS still currently lacks. And I hope someday, someday, uh, somebody will make a dynamic campaign engine for it and integrate it as a, you know, that's a that's an add-on that if they ever developed it or if somebody developed it, you know, that that would be fifty dollars out of my pocket <laughs> as soon as they released it, as soon as I was able to buy it, and uh, I, I would get it. And unfortunately, I probably spent a little bit less time in, in Falcon. Uh, as I have over the 15, past 15 years. Ooh, 16 years. Wow. Been, a while. Been around a while, so... Well, that's kind of the tutorial for this. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much, and see you next time.